Hi guys, this is part two of section one and it is on piecewise functions, which is something you may have seen before, but we're going to go through it as if you have not. Okay, so by definition, a function that is defined using two or more equations for different intervals is a piecewise function. Take a look here at f of x, right? f of x, you see how it's split into two different equations. On the one hand, you have negative x plus 2, and on the other hand, you have x squared plus 2. Well, how can f of x equal two different functions? Well, here is how. They actually exist in different regions of the coordinate plane. For instance, the one in red, negative x plus 2, exists for x's less than 0. For some reason, I can't get that color there. Here we go. Okay, for x's less than 0. But the x squared plus 2 exists for x's greater than 0. That means, as you can see, there is a break, a partition, a separation at x equals 0. Something happens to the left and something else happens to the right. So what I like to do is I divide the, co the coordinate system, the grid, at that point, at x equals 0, using an imaginary line. Okay, in the beginning, I like to draw the imaginary line, and then once we get comfortable, you'll see that you won't have to do it every single time. So now you see that this has divided the coordinate system into two different regions. One region to the left is the region where the x values are less than zero, and then the other region is where the x values are greater than zero. Okay, so the red function here is going to be graphed in this region here, and the blue function is going to be graphed in the opposite region. So here's how we're going to start graphing. I'm going to do the red one first, then the blue one. The very, very first thing you have to do is you have to evaluate this red function at the partition at x equals 0, right? So at x equals 0, negative x plus 2 is negative 0 plus 2, which is 2, okay? So I go to x equals 0, y equals 2. That's that point right there. Now, notice how the inequality here says x is less than 0, not less than or equal to. So at y equals 2, I put an open circle. Okay, then I want to graph that equation there, negative x plus 2. So how does negative x plus 2 work? It's a straight line, right? Well, why don't we pick another point in that region, like negative 1? So at x equals negative 1, we have negative, negative 1 plus 2, that equals to 3. So when x is negative 1, y equals 3, and you see you're going to have a straight line there. Okay, so that's the equation, and that's the graph for that equation on that part of the grid. Now, on the, f on the other side, when x is greater than 0, I'm going to graph x squared plus 2. The first thing I do is evaluate that blue function at the partition at x equals 0. So I say at x equals 0, x squared plus 2, right, that's going to be 0 squared plus 2, 2. But look, it's greater than or equal to. That means at y equals 2, I'm going to put a closed circle. So look, we come over here. I already had an open circle there. Now I'm going to put a closed circle on top of it. When I have open on top of closed, I just close the circle. Okay, next I want to graph x squared plus 2. Now that's going to look like a parabola, right? 
So let's pick another point. At x equals 1, I have 1 squared plus 2, 3. Okay, and then, you know, if you want to put another point at x equals 2, I have 2 squared plus 2, which is 6. So I go here, and that's going to look like a parabola. Okay. Okay, and with that, I have graphed my equation. Um, you can leave the dotted line there or you can erase it. It's completely up to you. It really doesn't make a difference to me. Okay, let's take a look at an application. Where is this thing used? Well, here is one place where it's used. A cell phone company offers the following plan. Now, I have to say this is more of a thing from like the 90s and the early 2000s when we weren't as free to use our minutes and, you know, we actually had like certain number of minutes that we could use. So you get to pay $80 and you get 1,500 minutes for free, right? You can use your phone for free and talk for 1,500 minutes. Then if you surpass 1,500 minutes, additional voice time costs 40 cents a minute. So you spoke for 1,500 minutes, Okay, and then if you are on the phone for another minute, you pay 40 cents, two minutes, 80 cents, and so on. This is a piecewise function because there is clearly a break. You know, when you're below 1500, it's one thing. As soon as you pass 1500, it's another thing. So the function for the monthly charges C is as follows C of T, that's the cost or the charges is equal to $80 if you speak from 0 to 1500 minutes or it's 80 plus 40 cents for each additional minute if you speak over 1500 minutes, right? So for example, if you spoke for 1510 minutes, how much do you pay? You pay $80 plus 40 cents for each additional minute, you know, of the 10 minutes, right? So that number is 1510 minus 1500. That's what it is. It's how much you spoke minus 1500. Okay. So state the significance of each of the following. And I only, I only actually have one here. Find and state the significance. So C of 754. When T is 754, how much is C? Well, when T is 754, which of these realms am I in? Where does 754 fit in? Now that's your T value. In which of these regions does T equals 754 fall? This one. In that region, the function is just 80. Okay, so C of 754 equals 80. And what does that mean? Um, the charge for using 750 minutes is $80, okay? So if we were to take, you know, another example, so suppose I had f of x is equal to x squared when x is less than negative 1 and 2x when x is greater than or equal to 1, okay? And suppose I needed to find f of 4. Well, this is the x value. In which of these regions does an x value of 4 fall? Here, right? x equals 4 is in this region when x is greater than 1. So I use this equation. And I say, okay, that's 2 times 4, 8. 
On the other hand, if I had to find, you know, f of negative 2, well, where does negative 2 fall? In that region. So I plug negative 2 into that equation, and I get 4. Okay? All right, let's do this one. Let's graph and then first find the function values and then graph. Okay, so here is my f of x. I'm, I've divided it into three regions this time. Okay, I need to find f of negative 2. This is the x value. When x is negative 2, what region am I in? Here. What's the equation for that? Here. So f of negative 2 is negative, negative 2, which is 2. Okay, how about f of 3? When x is 3, right, what region does that fall into? Here. What's the equation for that? 1. f of 3 is just 1. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and graph these. Okay. So look at where the partitions are here. To graph, first you have to look at the partitions. Look, I have one partition at x equals 0. Okay, so that's where I do one partition. I have another partition at x equals 1. So that's where I do another partition. That's tight, but it's okay. We can do this. Now, do you see how I've divided this graph into one, two, and three regions. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. All right, so in region one, we're going to graph these stuff, right? Negative x. Okay, that's in region one. The partition for region one is x is zero. So the first thing I do is I say at x equals zero, negative 0 is 0. It's an open circle at x equals 0, y equals 0. In that region, I'm going to graph negative x. So let's pick another point at x equals, I don't know, negative 2, y equals 2, right? So negative 2, 2, that's what that looks like. Okay, now in the region from 2 to 3, right, in that region, I'm going to graph this. Now, take a look at that. For that one, there are two endpoints that I have to plug in. So first I plug in the 0, and I say at x equals 0, y is 0 squared, 0. It's a closed circle there. So at 0, I go in and I just fill in that circle. Now I need to plug in the 1. At x equals 1, y equals 1 squared 1. It's a closed circle there, so I put a closed circle at 1, 1. That's a parabola, so I make it look like a parabola. Now on to region Three. I'm going to do that in red. Okay, region 3. Here. Region 3, I have a 1 there. That's like having an equation of y equals 1 for the entire region. Well, what does y equals 1 look like? A horizontal line at 1 right there. So that is what that looks like. Okay? All right, last but not least, now we have to be able to write an equation for a graph. Okay, so take a look at this. I have three equations here, right? And I'm going to label them one, two, and three. So when I have f of x, that's going to split up into three equations. Okay, let's take a look at equation number one, uh, graph number one. That's a straight line, right? How can I write an equation for that 
line. Well, think back to algebra one. In order to write an equation for a line, it has to be in y equals mx plus b form. So I need a slope and a y-intercept. Okay, the slope of this line here is you go up one over two, so it's one half. And the y-intercept is zero, so that's one half x plus zero, one half x. So that's my first equation here, one half x. Now, what is the domain? What are the x values for which that particular graph exists? Starts at negative two, goes to zero, closed circles, so negative two to zero, closed circles for both. Okay. Let's move on to graph number two. That's also an, uh, a linear equation, a linear graph. So it's gonna be y equals mx plus b. Okay, what's the slope here? It's negative two over one, negative two x, and then what's the y-intercept? Two, so that's negative two x plus two. Don't worry at this stage about open circle, closed circle, you don't have to worry. All you need is a slope and a point. So that is negative 2x plus 2. Okay, for what x values does that exist? It starts at 0, goes to 1. It's open at 0, so I leave that open, but it's a closed circle at 1, so I close that one. Okay, last I have the equation for number three. That's a horizontal line. That's a horizontal line that goes through y equals negative one. So the equation for that is y equals negative one. That means here I just put negative one. Okay, what values does that exist for? Well, it starts at one and goes to three. And it's open at one close that three, so that is the equation for that graph, okay? So three graphs, three equations, two graphs, two equations, and then you have to fix the domain. Okay, thank you very much, and go ahead and start on your homework.